Every SAT math problem falls into one of two categories. Either it's so baby easy you can get it done in 5 seconds or less, or College Board is trying to ruin your entire weekend. In about 30 seconds, I'm going to show you the exact mental checklist I use to crack impossible math SAT problems. And I'll also give you a shortcut that will bail you out even when your brain freezes. No SAT math problem is actually hard. Easy math problems take 1 to 2 steps. Hard ones take 3 to 7 steps. The steps don't change in difficulty, it's just the amount of steps that makes them hard. Look at this problem. You might think it's scary geometry, but you actually just solve it using the Pythagorean theorem in a system of equations. Neither step is hard, the only hard part is realizing which steps to do, which is what we're about to fix. Here's my patent pending 3 step process to solve any hard SAT math problem. First, identify the question. This sounds pretty obvious, but nobody does it. Are they asking for a side link, slope, solution, or soul? Name it first. Doing this will make step 3 of the process way faster. Step 2. Write down info. I know what you're thinking. I'll remember it. Cool bro, enjoy your 1100. Put it on paper and put the fries in the bag. Step 3. The realization method. SAT math is a puzzle game. At first you're clueless, and then you have the aha moment. Right triangle. Oh, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. Oh, I can use a system of equations too. That aha moment is what I call a realization. Your whole goal in hard math problems is to make these realizations faster and on purpose. When you're stuck at a problem, don't stare at it like it owes you money. Start rattling off ideas for how to solve it in your head. Sokotoa, 306090, regression, McDonald's application. Most of your first guesses will be completely wrong, but this doesn't matter. Keep listing until one of them sticks. That's how problem solving works. That's how winning is done! Yes, it will burn brain calories. But if you avoid that, your school will stay capped forever. Sometimes this process still does fail. Here's what to do when you get cooked. There are two reasons why you miss any math problem. Either you are missing a key concept, like you forgot the Pythagorean theorem exists or something, in which case you should watch a quick refresher and patch the gap in your knowledge. Or you missed a realization. If this is the case, you should study the solution that the problem gives you and then redo the problem twice. You want to literally train your brain to auto-spot that move the next time, even if the problem looks a little bit different. If it's a quadratic problem, use either a vertex thing or Desmos regression. If it's algebra, put it into Desmos and keep going. If it's a right triangle, either use Sokotoa 306090 or the Pythagorean theorem. If literally nothing else works, plug the answer choices back into the problem and do it that way. This actually is way more effective than you might think. You can do all of this and still get absolutely cooked on test day. But luckily, I have a rule that will help you with that as well. Keep in mind, some questions will always just be traps. If you've literally tried a few approaches and your brain is still not finding the right answer, just skip the problem and come back to it later if you have time. The SAT is a way to test. Missing an easy problem hurts way more than missing a hard problem. So you shouldn't spend 5 minutes donating points to College Board when you could be getting that dream score if you just skip that problem and let your ego take a small hit. So I know what you're thinking, this all sounds great, how do I actually do any of this? I built a free GPT prompt in my school community that can generate basically any SAT math problem you want. This is perfect for drilling the realization method on demand, and if your test is this week, you can get in there now, and it might literally save your score. The link is in the description, let's ace this SAT guys.